It's dress rehearsal time in Gelsenkirchen. The clock is ticking and Germany have 90 minutes of friendly action against Serbia in which to put the finishing touches to the tactical plan for Euro 2008. The tournament begins seven days from now. Hello from me, Derek Ray. Joachim Löw has whittled his squad down to the necessary 23 and he'll want to see a more polished performance than the one he saw against Belarus on Tuesday in the 2-2 draw in Kaiserslautern. Tommy Smith joins me for commentary here on ESPN. Tommy, there's the programme for Germany come Euro 2008. They start in Klagenfurt against Poland on the 8th of June, that's Sunday of next week, and there are still a few wrinkles to be ironed out. Yeah, there certainly are. In particular, you know, the goalkeeper situation looks like it's going to be ironed out, and uh, by the time they get to Croatia and Austria, well, Germany should be in good shape. The big problem, of course, is who's going to start up front? That would be the big question. Yes, and Joachim Löw has added Kevin Corani and Mario Gomez to the equation today. I can tell you it's a case of merely perming any two from five in the striking department. I should think Miroslav Klose is guaranteed a place in that first game against Poland. Croatia and the co-hosts Austria, Germany's other opponents in Group B. Mikhail Balak will captain the side. Jens Lehmann keeps his place in goal despite a wobbly performance against the Belarusians. We're looking forward to this here in Gelsenkirchen. Germany against Serbia coming up on ESPN. Derek Ray and Tommy Smith welcoming you back to Gelsenkirchen and we're listening to the German national anthem. the German Chancellor Angela Merkel is here to take in the game Germany against Serbia an action coming to you from the Feltins Arena here in Gelsenkirchen in the industrial northwest of the country it's the send-off for Germany before Euro 2008 Four changes from the side that we saw on Tuesday with Hitzelsberger, Odonkor, Klose and Podolski dropping out in favour of a fit again Marcel Janssen, Clemens Fritz and striking pair Kevin Kurani. He'll play in front of his own Schalke public and Mario Gomez, the man with the best goal-scoring average of any player in any squad going into the European Championship. Well, that'd be a big question. Who's going to be the two men or the one man that will start out of that? Because Gomez and Kurani, I don't think the two of them will start. And Janssen, well, they needed him back at left full. For Serbia, Miroslav Djukic tinkered with his side in Wednesday's 2-1 defeat against Russia down in Burghausen, but he's recalled most of his first-choice players today. Marco Pantelic, who plays his club football here in Germany for Hertha, is the man in form, having scored against the Russians as well as against the Republic of Ireland last weekend. And his running partner will be Illich. That's a pretty strong back lane when you look at uh, Dragutinovic on one side and Rukovina on the other side with Vidic and even if Cic inside in the middle. That's a pretty good back line. The question is, can they get something out of the midfield? And a presentation here being made to Mladen Kristajic, former Serbian international, being recognised for his 57 caps. No longer plays international football, but of course, this is his second home. Being a Schalke player. My Serbian FA giving Mladen Kristajic the golden ball for his services. He's played for what was Yugoslavia and then Serbia and Montenegro. 
Now oh, in the modern incarnation, simply Serbia. Well, it's the Champions League final revisited, isn't it? Nemanja Vidic and Mikhail Balak. Vidic was on the winning side. For Manchester United, Mikhail Balak had that heartbreaking penalty shootout defeat to digest. He was given four days to do so before joining up with the German national side in Mallorca ahead of the Belarus game. Yeah, when you get uh, a situation like that, uh, <laughs> it takes, I think, more than seven days or seven weeks to get over it. But he has the Euros coming and he knows, in particular, Balak knows how important that is. He's never afraid to say what's on his mind. Well, here's a man we'll be watching very closely, Christoph Metzelda. He wasn't at his best against Belarus. Of course, he hasn't had too many games under his belt of late, just two competitive matches for Real Madrid after coming back from the foot injury. And we're about to observe a minute's silence here in Gelsenkirchen. It's a memory of Herbert Kratkowski, the former West German international. from this part of Germany. Heinz Kwiatkowski, as he was affectionately known, member of the West German side that won the 1954 World Cup. A miracle of Bern. Ready to go on this Saturday. Germany in the white shirts with the dark shorts and Serbia in red and blue. The match referee, by the way, is the Frenchman, Freddy Fautrel. It's a capacity crowd here. All the 53,313 tickets have been snapped up. Last game for Germany before the Euros begin. And the German players had a punishing training schedule 48 hours before their match against Belarus. Joachim Löw believes that's why fatigue appeared to get the better of them in Kaiserslautern. Will it be different today? Only touch for Jens Lehmann. He's been talking a lot about the uh, new ball to be used at Euro 2008, it's called the Euro Pass. And he felt that it took him a bit of time to adjust to it. And he was uh, given it uh, in a training session recently and then saw it in the match against Belarus. Well, Oliver Kahn said nonsense. He said it's a great ball. He said there, there's little uh, dots on it that makes it easier to grab than the old ball. But Lehman said that it take, takes off very, very quick. Very often a theme at the start of major international tournaments, the way the new designated ball flies. Pantelic over there on the right for Serbia. And then two days in, two games into the tournament, you never hear another word about the ball. Germany attacking the goal to our right in this first half. Flicked forward by Balak. Mario Gomez, big and bustling. He scored six goals in nine previous games for Germany. The Stuttgart man missed out on Tuesday because of a calf problem. There's Rukovina, Antonio Rukovina, who plays his club football just along the autobahn for Borussia Dortmund. He joined them in January from Partizan Belgrade. Partizan, who won the Serbian Championship just the other day. Thorsten Frings can always be counted on to give drive and bite to the German midfield. Well, I think the questions I have is the German uh, goalkeeper, the German centre-back, and who's going to be the striker with Klose? I have a feeling it may be Gomez, but that's another story. Janssen definitely is needed as the left full-back. Gomez makes the run again here. 
Branislav Ivanovic, the forgotten man at Chelsea, joined them in January from Lokomotiv Moscow, but hasn't really been able to get himself match fit. Of course, always difficult when a player joins a Western European club in the Eastern European close season. Expected to be ready for match action. We didn't expect to see a lot more from Ivanovic next term. In Chelsea colours, Dragutinovic there, Ivica Dragutinovic of Sevilla. Well, he comes in at this one very late, in over the ball, and uh, he does crack through Fritz. Wolf is not very happy with that tackle. Germany have lost just twice under Joachim Löw. Against Denmark in a friendly and against the Czech Republic in a European Championship qualifier. Kevin Kurani up there inside the Serbian penalty area. Frings to whip it in. Antelic and Ilic trying to combine. No real difficulties encountered by Philip Lam, playing in his preferred position of right back. Recently extended his contract with Bayern Munich, tying him to the club until 2012. Smeljanovic there putting on a little bit of a, a coaching session in the midfield. The Germans were running around him. Dragutinovic playing in his 41st international game. Nodded out by Lam. This is Bosco Jankovic with the throw. He's in Italy for Palermo. Now Mertesacker will likely figure prominently for Joachim Löw's side in Euro 2008. It's a much uh, more conservative start than we saw against Belarus from the Germans. By Karani was a good one. It's come to Gomez. Deciding to shoot. Clemens Fritz hoping to follow up. And Philippe Lam had it taken away from him. Serbia building for the next set of World Cup qualifiers. They're in a group with France, Romania, Lithuania. Austria and the Faroe Islands. They start the campaign on the 6th of September at home to the Faroes. Dragutinovic sliding in an attempt to keep it in. Well, you know, man for man, they've got a pretty good looking outfit. I mean, now that they've decided to go it on their own, and uh, I think that they're a team that's going to be heard from in the next uh, World Cup qualifying. Of course, forced to go it alone. Up with Montenegro in 2006 voting to dissolve the political union with Serbia. That's Miroslav Djukic who took over as Serbian boss in December, succeeding Javier Clemente. I think he's got some real good talent. I mean, Pantelic looks like he could be a really good goal scorer. And there's no question about his backline. I mean, this is a good anchor backline. Vidic is one of those players that we know so much about. Didn't get to play in any matches at the 2006 World Cup, Nemanja Vidic, because of a knee injury. And on the subject of that World Cup, the stadium here in Gelsenkirchen doesn't bring back happy memories for uh, Serbia and Montenegro as they were. As they lost to Argentina 6-0 here. Lost every single one of their group matches. And as Miroslav Djukic was saying yesterday, it's a new side. A new, younger side. Ivanovic. And uh, Kovacevic likes to sit in front of the defence and spray the passes around. The run was made by Bosko Jankovic on this near side. 17th cap for Jankovic. Philip Lamb, by the way, delighted that Jürgen Klinsmann, who will be his club manager at Bayern Munich next season, also sees him as a right-back. Spent the early part of his career over on the left-hand side of 
the defence for clubs, I say clubs plural, Stuttgart and Bayern Munich as well as country. Yeah, I mean, and he had such a fantastic World Cup on the left. And Schweinsteiger, and here's Marcel Janssen. And it'll be the first corner to Germany. Well, Janssen coming up on the left, like Philip Lamb did in the World Cup, that time putting a little bit of pressure on, and that ball just spun away. Marvellous arena, this. Feltins Arena in Gelsenkirchen. Eight minutes on the stopwatch. Schweinsteiger with the German corner. Headed away by Ivanovic in the end. Thorsten Fings not long back from injury. Sasha Illich wearing the number 22 shirt, the Red Bull Salzburg player in Austria. Dragatinovic back to Vladimir Stojkovic. He's returned to the goalkeeping position, having been rested for the match against Russia in Burghausen. Oh, Lehmann had to come out a long way that time. Jens Lehmann makes his 55th international appearance. And he did struggle against Belarus, but did Germany really have an alternative? Robert Enke has only ever played once for the national side. He's the number two. And uh, René Adler has yet to appear at international level. Well, it's almost like uh, Love is saying, OK, we have to go with Lehman. Lehman is our keeper. He's going to be the man who's going to take us through the tournament. I thought he might have taken a look at Enke today, but he decided he wants to give uh, Lehman more playing time. That's the big problem with Lehman, isn't he? He just doesn't get the playing time at Arsenal. I mean, that, that's his whole problem. It's been an issue back and forth for several months. I remember the tail end of the last calendar year, Joachim Lowe was saying that you've really got to be playing regularly for your club side if you want to be in the national team. Lehmann hasn't been playing regularly for Arsenal. Put an header that time by Mertesacker. And then he puts a central defender on that hasn't played regularly for Real Madrid. Now Fritz wants the return ball here. Not quite catch up with it. Clemens Fritz of Werder Bremen who began his career as a striker. Gomez was trying to pull the strings. Well, Gomez here flicks this one off his heel and then it comes back out, but he does get into the play again and then a little bit too strong. He has Fritz in the perfect position. He's cutting in behind the defender. He just needs to play the ball a little bit softer to him. Six goals and nine internationals. You can't argue with that rate of striking. Scored 19 in 25 Bundesliga games this past season for Stuttgart. Shrill whistle of French referee Freddy Fautrel. The player down here is Pantelic. Well, Pantelic here just gets a... He gets a knee from... Uh, Metzelder. But he's doing a little bit of pushing off, but he was the recipient of a very bad knee in the kidneys. That's why he's down. And the crowd may be whistling, but I'll tell you, he got a fair smack. Miroslav Djukic, classy defender back in the day. Pantelic has come off second best and that joust with Metzelda. A free kick decision going against Pantelic. Joachim Löw on Wednesday had to cut three players from his squad, and the three ended up being young Marco Marine, Jermaine Jones of Schalke, and Sir Patrick Helmes. Well, I got two of them right, but I didn't even cut Marine. And there'll be chances for Marine in the future. Vatilic soldiering on. Things. 
And Jansen succeeds in winning the throw. Ball coming off Stefan Babovic, a Nantes player in France. Balak. This is the 22nd match Germany have played under Joachim Löw. They've won 15 of the previous 21, and drawn four and lost only two. Things. This is Fritz. Hard to believe that Germany last won a match at the European Championship finals back in 1996 when they were European champions. Victories at Euro 2000, similar story at Euro 2004 in Portugal. Yeah, very disappointing, and uh, they're doing a lot of good movement uh, in this game, but they're not really getting anywhere with it. They're just not as sharp as a team that you might expect as favourites for the Euros. And things. Bastian Schweinsteiger going to get onto his right foot. Things again, offering support. Normally the deepest lying of all the midfield players for Germany. Joachim Löw swears by 4-4-2. Balak at the centrepiece of the 4-4-2 formation. Gomez, nice little touches. From an acute angle, Mario Gomez. And there's the header. Oh, it was cleared off the line. And it was an opportunity. Vidic solving the problem for Serbia, foiling Mikhail Balak. Well, they finally started to then roll along. And when the ball comes back across, Gomez makes a great play here to keep the ball alive. And uh, the header coming in, and uh, Vidic takes it away from Balak. Two men who are very used to playing against one another in England. And that was a great, great save by Vidic. That was a certain goal. The keeper was out of the play. He was beaten, and Vidic takes it off the line. Balak once more for Germany. Israel note of encouragement and offside here. The flag did go up as Kevin Kurani made the forward dash. Gomez was there as well. Well, really, Kurani hasn't been in the game so far. And that's. Some of you were away while we encountered technical problems. We hope they've been resolved once and for all now. And still Germany nil, Serbia nil here in Gelsenkirchen. Boma has gone in with a very heavy tackle there on uh, Smiljanovic. And the space opening up for Bosko Jankovic, and he might fancy the shot. Ivanovic. There's Nemanja Vidic. 
The Serbian captain. Seen very much as the successor to Mladen Kristajic, whom we saw earlier at international level. Got a bit of a knock, uh, Vidic. Hit on the side of the head. He's floated forward with Balak doing the chasing. Stankiewicz there to claim it. Well, Balak is certainly the man who's going to run that uh, midfield. Has the ability to do so. Oh, the German defence stretched here, and a great chance for the opening goal. It's put away, and that will be worrying for Germany. Bushko Jankovic has scored for Serbia. A gaping hole in the middle of that German rear guard. Lehmann hung out to dry. It's Germany nil, Serbia one. Not the sort of thing Joachim Löw wanted to witness so close to Euro 2008. Well, you can see what happens here. They're absolutely dragged out. Metzelder's completely out of position. And uh, this is just uh, not a good good sign for Germany. Beautiful ball pushed through. And uh, Illich just floats it in. And uh, Jankovic puts it away. Gets on to the end of it. Outruns everybody. And he puts it between Lehmann's legs. But Frings missed a tackle in midfield. Love cannot be happy with this at all. They're certainly happy. Bosko Jankovic in the 19th minutes officially for Serbia. His fourth international goal. Now two goals were conceded by Germany on Tuesday against Belarus. Those two goals in the second half after the Germans had built up a 2 0 advantage. And that certainly won't help confidence. It's been much criticised the central defensive partnership of Mertesaka and Metzelda. It was almost like there was a highway down the middle of the two of them there, and uh, I know I don't put a whole lot of stock in friendlies, but nevertheless, it's, it's certainly a concern because of the fact that Metzelda has missed so much time with, with that injury. Balak. Does Germany go in search of an equaliser? And their passing game has been off uh, today, Germany. They're just not stringing them together. back from the training camp base of Mallorca yesterday evening spent the night at the sports school in Kaiserau actually 10 German players had to take part in unscheduled anti-doping tests this is the new UEFA policy to have more tests than ever before and many of them unscheduled look at that I mean there's there's an absolute highway right there for Jankovic to go through I mean, there's so much room between uh, Metzelder and Mertesacker. And I think the problem for Germany is that they don't have a whole lot of options when it comes to central defenders. Food for thought, as far as Joachim Löw is concerned. He does have Heiko Westermann as an option at the back. Metzelder, of course, uh, had the foot problem with Real Madrid. He's been out for several months. Only taken part in two competitive matches for his club side since November. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, playing time. I mean, if you listen to Love talking about other players that need to be playing all the time, he wasn't playing all the time, but his faith is still in him. I think that could be a mistake. I think Metzelder could be a problem at the back. Frings with this German free kick. Gomez was up there, trying to pose problems for Vidic and company. Appealing for the corner. Should be a corner. Been given. Steiger again with it. Sails over everyone. Terribly hit corner. I mean, it's just wayward. And barking out the marching orders to his players, Joachim Löw. Germany have yet to properly click in this match. Yeah, nothing out of midfield really for them. I mean, Ballock's had one or two runs, but after that, we haven't seen anything from Lamb coming down as an attacker on the right-hand side. And Karani has failed to get into the game altogether. Fritz as well. There's a few players out there have had very few touches on the ball. Frings has had no uh, impact in midfield. This is Per Mertesacker on Werder Bremen. 
Mets Helder. Anak's pass. So many of these Serbian players very comfortable on the ball. Chopping challenge came in from Jankovic. Play Rages on here. And that will be a free kick in Karani's favour. Well, Karani coming out to meet the ball that time, and he forced Dragatinovic to come with him. And when Dragatinovic comes with him, he makes the mistake of uh, taking him down. He would argue that he got a touch on the ball. I don't think so. So the table is set for Germany once more. Mikhail Banak has scored 35 goals for his country. 80 previous internationals. And trying to deceive Stojkovic. So rather unsuccessfully. Yeah, took a deflection, but it came off his own man by the looks of things, yeah. Right there, it comes off the back of uh, Fritz, who didn't even know that the ball was coming to him. Clemens Fritz, we think, will be first choice for the right midfield position. This plays a lot of his football at right back for Werder Bremen. I'm not sure if you look at the way Donker played in that position uh, against Belarus, he brought a lot more movement to the team than Fritz has brought in this game. He's a bit more unpredictable, isn't he, Odoncourt? Yeah. And I think the feeling is he's a better bet as a substitute. If uh, Joachim Löw wants to play as joker. And Fritz. And Dragatinovic getting stuck in. Obalak has got the break of it. Oh, they headed over the top by Kurani. It's all happened at pace for Germany. Serbia thought that there was a foul on him and trying to agree with them, but Balak made a great recovery. Uh, the referee plays on and uh, Balak floats it across onto the back post. That thing should have done better. It should have been Karani's had all the net to shoot it. Here's Fritz pushing through. Not, I guess. Only six or one half a dozen of another, wasn't it? Yeah, there wasn't much in it. I think the referee did play on, he, he waved the advantage to Germany. Lam. Balak. And they've put it out to Bastian Schweinsteiger, who did well. Closed here by Rukovina. Balak. Directing operations. Oh, a shot for a penalty. And it hasn't been given. Well, the German players are furious with French referee Freddy Fautrel. Let's oh, watch here as things went down inside the box. No, that's not a penalty kick. He didn't touch him. I mean, he never touched him. Illich is back there, but he didn't touch him. But it was great play by uh, Balak. A couple of lovely touches on the ball. Swept away by Kuzmanovic. Zdravko Kuzmanovic. Swiss born to a family of Serbian expats despite playing for Switzerland at youth level wanted to throw his lot in with Serbia the country that he says is in his heart Dragutinovic for Serbia who lead by goal to nil a goal coming from Bosko Jankovic landed well that time Exchanging passes with Kurani. Desperate defending by Serbia. Lovely work from Lam. Uh, Vidic just put a boot to the ball and drove it behind. Uh, Kurani, Lam just combining well. And Fritz was the man who started it off with a good tackle. Gomez waits. Kurani waits. Schweinsteiger again to deliver. Eighteen minutes to go to half time. Over the head of Kevin Kurani. Well, that's twice now that he's hit corner kicks like that. The two of them have gone out over the touchline on the opposite side. I mean, is it the ball? It's just taken off. Here's this situation inside of the box. I don't think he fouled them. 
There's the ball away. Uh, I guess you could have given it and there wouldn't be too many objections. He was disgusted. As Torsten Frings was certainly fully convinced. Not so this man, Freddy Fortrell. the throw. Torani. I'm so disappointed to miss out on the 2006 World Cup finals, Kevin Corani. I was saying earlier on this week in an interview that uh, he fancies a crack at English football in the future. Thinks he has the perfect game for the Premier League. With the money that's in the Premier League, everybody thinks they have the perfect game for it, don't they? He did to qualify it by saying that lifestyle-wise, he would probably prefer Italy or Spain. But to stylistically, he thinks uh, England would be the best fit. That's for the future. He's very much a Schalke player at present. And the referee had a good view of that. And the challenge came crunching in from Babovic on Schweinsteiger. Well, he's very, very late, although in, in his defence, he's already falling himself. I think he had lost his footing before he smacked into Schweinsteiger. Lamb. And to both strikers were up there, Gomez and Kurani. Schweinsteiger, oh, and Gomez couldn't control it. Couldn't capitalise. Well, he certainly got a gift, Gomez. He just couldn't take the ball down. And Clemens Fritz topples over on the very edge of the area. Nothing there. Jankovic. This is Ilic. And a big hand in that goal scored by Jankovic in the 19th minute for Serbia. Yeah, now he's coming back. He's playing really deep. He's uh, almost become an extra defender. Pantelic scorer for Serbia in the matches against the Republic of Ireland and Russia it's prior to this one you saw the signal from Freddy Fortrell it's a throw on the near side Ivanovic wanting to have his say Signed a three-and-a-half-year deal with Chelsea. £9.7 million deal from Lokomotiv Moscow. The towering Mertesacker. was laid off initially by Kurani. Mertesacker looks a bit awkward. He reads the game very well. He's been saying all the right things about his central defensive partner, Christoph Metzelda. He's delighted to have him back. I mean, playing at their best, we saw it in the World Cup. We know what they're capable of. They're two very big men in the middle can snuff out a lot of dangerous situations. And that was the big worry, Tommy, going into the last World Cup, the big worry here in Germany, that the two central defenders weren't strong enough with the ball at their feet. Perhaps lacked a little bit of pace. Karani going in here. Uh, Karani, I don't see much of anything, but uh, the referee decides to call a foul on Karani. Jankovic. They go again, Kuzmanovic. Unable to make the connection with Pantelic. Yeah. 
Well, Frings is just not getting involved in the game. Uh, just he's had a very, very difficult time. You know, the hard work in midfield has been done by Ballock. Pass from Gomez comes off Dragutinovic. Away by Vladimir Stojkovic of Sporting. Signed a five year deal with Sporting of Portugal last summer. He got injured halfway through the most recent league campaign. Wasn't able to get his place back. First choice for Serbia, however. Blow was doubtless hoping that Germany would tick all the boxes and this the uh, final game ahead of Euro 2008. And a few question marks remain. Ugotinovic with the challenge of an illegal nature on Fitz. Well, when you looked at that back four for Serbia, you knew it was going to be a difficult night for the Germans because, I mean, every player is an accomplished player in every position at the back and uh, they have really taken this German side and closed them down. Again, Frings will look to find Gomez or Kurani. Not very adept in the air. I like the sneaky on these as well. And Zelda will want to join in as well. Disappointing free kick from Frings. set pieces this watchers Pantelic tries to carve out something for Serbia the set pieces for Germany have been very very much below par tonight and that was below par from Pantelic now Gomez Germany might be onto something support there on the left and the former Schweinsteiger Gomez oh couldn't make contact and Kurani was just a meter or so away too Played it exactly as they should. Beautiful flowing movement, something we expected more of from Germany tonight. And Schweinsteiger played the ball back across into the middle, and Gomez just unable to get a touch onto it. It was the perfect setup, absolutely perfect. We we'll look forward to seeing that again, just to take a look at how good a chance it was for Mario Gomez. He uh, snatched at it. Oh, a skilled edge. Watch him in the middle. He dispatches the ball, comes through to it. Look at that. He just, I mean, he should have buried that ball. I mean, he just, for some reason, when Schweinsteiger plays it back to him, watch Gomez. He swings at it here, and he just missed it completely. And the defender took it away from Karani. Even she knows he should have scored. Angela Merkel willing it in. It's not a great football fan. She admits that. Uh, always there to encourage the national side. Well, she enjoyed that. Imagine how much she would have enjoyed it had they scored. Sneak play by Jansen over there on the left to deliver it, and then uh, Gomez unable to make contact with the ball. Still 1 0 to Serbia. Miroslav Djukic, who spent Many of his peak seasons with Valencia in Spain. Central defender. Nemanja Vidic, of course, was a member of that so-called famous four defence. Conceded just one goal in ten matches en route to qualifying for the 2006 World Cup finals. But so we know what happened once they got to the finals. Yeah. I should have saved some of those uh, clean sheets. Mertesaka. This is Fritz. And Balak trying to drive his team on. Headed behind by Nemanja Vidic. 
Well, Balak has just come on to a game at the right time for Germany, hasn't he? I mean, there was a little bit of a lull during the season. He had that injury with Chelsea, but he ended the season well. And certainly, you have to be very impressed with the two uh, the two friendlies that Germany have played this week. Balak's been all over the place. Well, Germany know that Balak has to lead by example if they are to be successful at Euro 2008. Frings with a corner, and there is the header from Mikhail Balak. A bit too straight to worry Stojkovic. But they're knocking on the door now. Well, had he gone anywhere else, and it's something that he's become so good at on those corner kicks, had he gone to the right or left, he probably had himself a goal. He went right down Broadway, and the keeper's standing right there and takes it away. But a great effort by Balak. He's got to be marked on those free kicks, but there would have been a bit of controversy there. There was a, a foul. Fritz started off as a striker. It's highly versatile. One of the many reasons why Joachim Love feels he ought to be on the side. Why he get pushed here? Stanavko Kuzmanovic doing the pushing. Kuzmanovic of Fiorentina in Italy. Yes, they managed to get into the Champions League next season, having finished fourth in Serie A. Rings. And that's Zelda. Rare error in judgment from Balak. Dragutinovic. They don't appear harried, uh, Serbia, do they, Tommy? Not at all, not at all. Very comfortable on the ball. They're not feeling any pressure here at all. They're moving the ball around. They have a one-goal lead. And uh, they're just sitting on it a little bit. This is becoming embarrassing for Germany. Well, they want to go into Euro 2008 on a positive note. With positive memories. They kick to Serbia. Well, Serbia with about 10 or 12 good touches on the ball, and then the Germans commit the foul. Jankovic, the goal scorer for Serbia. Here's Dragutinovic. Ivanovic. Offside, the flag going up against Serbia here. The run was made by Lazovic. Part of the game against Belarus, German played, the Germans played very well in the first half. It was the second half that slowed down a bit. Maybe it'll be a second half performance here because their first half has left a lot to be desired. Things. Find a way through Mario Gomez. Corani. Plenty of bodies back in a hurry for Serbia. Lama out to the far side. Jansen's header. Schweinsteiger and Jansen. Look more awkward than anything else as Jansen took the tumble. Yeah, Jansen was leaning in and uh, he was never going to get to that ball and he was never going to get a penalty kick. As Pavovic was his direct opponent. Serbia happy to sit and wait, pick their spots on the counter-attack. That formula has worked very nicely so far. Pantelic has had to do much of the foraging. This is Mertesacker, with three and a half minutes to go to half-time in Gelsenkirchen. Dragutinovic concedes the throw. Bosko Jankovic, the goal scorer for Serbia, if you've just joined us here on ESPN. Metzelda. Once again to Kurani with that pass, but it didn't come off, and now 
Now Tosako has to pay attention. It's Pantelic with that little stumble. He had a Berlin striker. And it all grinds to a halt. It was promising. Oh, it certainly was. They were wide open again. I mean, Germany was not in the picture and Janssen was left completely. He was foundering on the far side and Pantelic fell first and then he just gave the ball away. Serbia will be very disappointed in that outing. Lam. And we're seeing a fair bit of slipping and sliding. That was Kurani. His turn. Germany not pleasing the punters here at the Feltins Arena. I'm sure they're not pleasing the coach in either. It's just not, there's no cutting edge to their play at all. Jansen has it taken away by Hukavina. He ran out of real estate. And, uh, he's kicking himself because he knows the counter-attacking possibility was on again for the Serbs. Thorsten Frings, Michael Balak. As Germany look for fluency, just 90 seconds from the half-time whistle. And that's going to be a free kick. Not much doubt about the decision in favour of Bastian Schweinsteiger. Well, once again, Balak plays him in. Nice move here by Schweinsteiger, and when he tries to go down round to Rukavina, he fouls him. Hansi Flick there on the bench beside Joachim Löw. Hansi Flick, Löw's assistant. And they can really get the heavy artillery forward at the set piece. Bastian Schweinsteiger responsible for most of the set pieces certainly the corners and the free kicks from wide positions here is Schweinsteiger he's trying to tee it up for Thorsten Frings he's hit with plenty of ferocity and into a Serbian body yeah it was a little bit slow to develop that was one of the problems Frings Missed by Rukavina. Schweinsteiger there beside the byline. He's gone into added time now at the end of the first half. Germany nil, Serbia one. The Germans have themselves another free kick, which they were anxious to take swiftly. Blam. and Schweinsteiger found the moments linking up over on the left pass from Frings and immediately broken up Frings has not had a good outing just as it was developing for Kuzmanovic and Serbia the half-time whistle goes Bosko Jankovic with the goal for the visitors not what Joachim Löw was hoping to see in this final test match for Germany ahead of Euro 2008. Very well taken, but questions can certainly be asked about Metzelda and the German defence. Our score is Germany 0, Serbia 1. Well, 45 minutes left for Germany to sort things out. It is only a friendly, we shouldn't forget that. The real action begins next weekend. Opening game of Euro 2008, of course, will be in Basel between Switzerland and the Czech Republic. But, uh, Tommy, first half here in Gelsenkirchen, not a lot for Germany to shout about. Not a lot, but they had a good opportunity here. Gomez keeps the ball alive, and uh, when it comes back across, you're going to see the good downward header taken off the line. Balak was the man who got the header onto it, and Vidic was the man who said, hey, you've got to keep them out of there. Chelsea and Man United again tussling on that one. And then... Uh, well, there's a little bit of a, a hole down the middle here, and uh, Jankovic runs onto it and snaps it by Lehmann. 
beautiful pass here. The ball played into him. There's good movement, and uh, Pantelic, Illich, and Jakovic finishes it off. Great, great movement there by the three men. And Germany did not look at all happy. Lehmann had very little chance on that one, but he was hung out to dry by his defenders. 38 minute. Balak again has been coming forward. Good, powerful header by Balak, but right into the keeper's mitts. He's become so adept at those corner kicks, finding that little bit of a crease. And look at that, he got in between four Serbian players to get a header onto that one. Best chance that he's had. Well, I'm sure we'll see changes in the second half, made by Joachim Lund. Germany nil, Serbia one. The goal from Bosko Jankovic for the visitors. Derek Ray and Tommy Smith welcoming you back to Gelsenkirchen on this Saturday evening now. Just gone half past six local time. And Germany not in the best of health. I'm talking about their uh, on-pitch performance. 1-0 in Serbia's favour. That goal from Bosko Jankovic of Palermo. And it wasn't a shining moment at all for the much maligned German defence. We'll see what changes Joachim Löw decides to make in the second half, Tommy, but this is not the send-off that he wanted to see, not so far at any rate. No, and certainly if you look at the men that he brought in from the last game, I don't think they performed all that well. Janssen hasn't made too many mistakes, but he's been cut out of position a couple of times. Fritz has had a tough time getting himself involved in the game. Karani, very few touches. Well, that young lad wants to see number 20 come on, and number 20, of course, is Lukas Podolski. One of the substitutes available to Joachim Löw. Germany earlier this year defeated Austria with ease in terms of the scoreline. 3-0 in Vienna, and Switzerland with ease in terms of the scoreline and the performance, 4-0. Uh, in the last week, the doubts have started to manifest themselves again. Podolski is talking things over with Joachim Löw. It appears that he will come on right at the start of the second half. And a couple of things are in Germany's favour as regards Euro 2008. They're the favourites of many, and uh, that has to do with and the fact that they're a young up-and-coming side based on what we saw in 2006 at the World Cup. It also has to do with the fact that they're in Group B. It doesn't look all that challenging. And they're in the easier half of the draw. Yeah, they don't meet one of the big teams, basically, until they get to the final. But, uh, you know, at, at a tournament like this, Derek, I've come to the conclusion that every game is a big game. And every team is a big team. And uh, Friedrich of Hertha will come on. He was the first choice right back at the 2006 World Cup. I wonder if this will mean Lam going to left back. We shall see. Actually, Mertesacker is the man who's gone off. So you've got uh, Lam, Friedrich, Metzelda, and Jansen. Podolski will uh, play his part in the second half. 25 goals in 47 previous internationals. Can be very explosive, and it's Podolski for Lam. Looks as though this might be considerably more attack-minded from Germany in the second half. We shall see. It's 1-0 to Serbia. Lazovic is on. Danko Lazovic of PSV. He's on for Miroslav Djukic's side. Go then the second half begins here at the Feltins Arena. Germany attacking the goal to our left. As we told you, Podolski and Friedrich are on. Lam and Mertesacker have gone off. Clemens Fritz now is at right back. And of Friedrichs in central defence alongside Christoph Metzelda. Jansen remains in the left full-back position. as though Schweinsteiger has gone over to the right. Here's Jansen. 
Giovanni just flicking it back. Major activity for Podolski. Now Gomez trying to put the wind up. Vidic. Well, he's a difficult man to put the wind up. Believe me, he reads the game very well. Gets himself in good positions. That ball looked like it was out. I'm not sure. Lamb didn't look himself uh, in this game early on. Whether they just took him off. Maybe he has a little nicking injury or something. Things will be entrusted with the German corner. Friedrich and Metzelda, the two defenders, have gone up there. No problems for the Serbian defence. Can they quickly turn defence into attack? Appeared to be on just for a second, but good read by Podolski. There's Schweinsteiger on the right. Podolski did very well that time because Serbia were off and running. So Lazovic was in the mood to do some damage. And Fitz trying to make inroads on that German right. Fragatinovic remains at left back for Serbia. Blue of trying out something a little bit different in tactical terms with Podolski on as the third attacker or if you like in the position just behind the front pair of Kurani and Gomez and there are those here in Germany who feel that that ought to have been looked at by the national side long ago well it's kind of late in the day to be looking at it now I mean you've got a half death before you go to the Euros you would have to ask, why was he not looking at it before? This is Podolski. Now it's Janssen. The Brukovina with the tidy challenge. Podolski. Seems to dazzle more for Germany than he does for his club side by Munich. Then again, he's in and out of the side. Difficult to break into the team with Miroslav Klose and... Luka Tony ahead of him in the pecking order. Babovic with the foul here on well, Podolski. Well, Podolski has seen a lot of possessions since coming into the game. The answer in full flight again, the tackle from Babovic. Stefan Babovic, 21 year old who plays in France for Nantes. I'm not sure what this does to Ballock's uh, position. On says French referee Freddy Fautrel, but now we have the whistle. Well, the German player down too. He could hit way off the ball. That's Elder just putting his hand up to the side of his face. I'm a bit surprised that Friedrich is on and not Heiko Westermann. Westermann missed the game on Tuesday because his wife was giving birth. Now here's Podolski. Well, he wanted to make it count. Not really coming close to making it count. Well, again, uh, Balak, the provider, bounces a little bit high from and uh, never really got hold of it. He hit it with the outside of his foot. Whatever chance he had of hitting it with the inside of his foot, Berg Tour 2008, they're calling it here in Germany. Alpine Tour 2008. Switzerland and Austria, the co-hosts of the European Championship Finals. And Germany in danger of embarking upon that mountain tour on thin ice. Things. Still a long way to go in this match. A foul by Milan Smiljanic, or Lola, as he's affectionately known. We've watched him a fair bit this past season in Spain with Espanyol. And a chance for Podolski, just minutes after he'd been brought on by Joachim Löw. 
Well, I think Podolski is trying so hard now. He wants to try to make a, a good impression on the coach here. He might be trying a little bit too hard. Marcel Janssen, once a Borussia Mönchengladbach, these days of Bayern Munich. Things was fouled, upended there by Sasha Illich. Balak. Uncharacteristically slacked by Balak. Yeah, he's made very few mistakes in this game. Serbia have yet to win in 2008 under Miroslav Djukic. It's almost like Germany are, hey, they're playing at, they're, they're looking at the Euros already rather than looking at this thing. Their mind doesn't seem to be in this game at all. And the players will get two days off after this match before assembling again in Ascona. Their base camp, the southern part of Switzerland near the Italian border. And the first game will be on Sunday, eight days from now, in Klagenfurt against Poland. Janssen, robust performer Marcel Janssen, cries from the home crowd here in Gelsenkirchen because they felt Janssen had been fouled, and indeed that was the referee's view as well. Rukovina gets a mild rebuke. Rukovina gets stuck in here the second hand. That's where he catches him. After the ball is gone, Rukovina catches his foot. Watch this. Janssen's coming through. And he just ca caught him. Not a whole lot in it. Thorsten Frings with the German free kick. 1-0, it remains to Serbia. That goal from Bosko Jankovic in the 19th minute. Stabbed away by Milan Smiljanic. So they try to build again through Jankovic. Narrowing it forward, but to Metzelda. Sweeps up, and he was a bit short with the pass back. I'm sure Jens Lehmann wasn't amused. But uh, had to deal with the situation and just got on with it. Well, you know, when your own teammate is the man who plays you into the biggest spot you had in the game, you can't be happy, and then certainly... Acquitted himself very well. Vlasovic went sliding in there for Serbia. This is Antonio Rukovina. Got to the German Cup final with Borussia Dortmund this past season. Lost a bit, unluckily, to Bayern Munich. And Rukovina with space, Germany falling asleep. And oh, how did it stay out? Off the woodwork with Lehmann beaten. Should have been a second goal for Serbia. And Bosko Jankovic knows it. Well, he scored once already. Really would have set the heather on fire had that gone in. Oh, it was a great effort. It was a great movement. Watch this Rukovina coming forward. Watch how hard Jankovic hits it. I mean, he really laced this one. The keeper's completely beaten, but his best friend is the woodwork. Look at that. He had no chance. It was a rocket. Now at the other end, Podolski. And it bubbles around there before coming to Schweinsteiger. The action starts to pick up again here at the start of the second half. And uh, finally, out of play by Illich. And from one end to the other, Jankovic could have made it 2-0. Neyman reacting a second or two late. He had no chance at all. And then this moment... Podolski drives this one across and it, it hits uh, the defender on the head. It looks like... Uh, Ivanovic. Yeah, he got hit on the head by his own man. Is and Svidic had tried to clear away the danger. Podolski winning that pocket of space for himself. And Germany knew what they were getting into when they scheduled a match with Serbia before Euro 2008. Stiff opposition. Things was trying to win it. It's Clemens Fritz. And Schweinsteiger fielded there by Vladimir Stojkovic. Didn't really get hold of it properly. 
Fritz making an impact, getting himself inside of the box. As we mentioned, when Serbia and Montenegro were here in Gelsenkirchen during the World Cup, they were on the wrong end of a 6-0 thrashing handed out by Argentina. Very different state of affairs so far. 56 minutes into this friendly. Kuzmanovic. And uh, finally the offside flag is raised against Babovic. Well, it was pretty easy to call this one. Third match in the space of a week for Serbia. They drew 1-1 with the Republic of Ireland and lost 2-1 to a makeshift Russian side. That was in Burghausen. Russia, like Germany, putting the finishing touches to their preparations for the European Championship finals. Balak has just drifted out of the game at the start of the second half, but a great ball for Podolski here from Balak. Lukas Podolski almost snatching at it. And a couple of chances have come his way since he's come on. Balak is the man who again, just a tiny little ball inside, and to Podolski. I mean, you try hard, you try hard. These are the things that don't impress the coach. That's two shots that now have been really wayward but again Balak is the only man that's playing anything out there uh, could have been a tester for Metzelda so diving down there not to get back to Jens Lehmann you said a while ago Tommy Germany were your team to win Euro 2008 are you standing by that prediction oh yeah I mean these friendlies don't mean anything Friendly's a friendly, hey, when the chips are down, I'll, uh, I'll see how to play against Poland before I get off the bandwagon at this stage. That's always a very, very interesting affair when Germany plays Poland. As so they met at the 2006 World Cup in Dortmund, and Germany had to work hard to pick up the three points. 1-0 was the final score. Lovely touches here, and Gomez! Thwarted by Nemanja Vidic, formidable opponent, of course, Vidic, the Serbian captain. Well, good movement again, great movement on the ball, great movement off the ball. He does very well with the control here, but Vidic, who reads the game as well as anybody, there's a little bit of a slip here that doesn't help Gomez, but Vidic comes in and saves the day. Torsten Frings at the German corner, it was head flicked on. No takers for Germany. That's gone behind for another corner. Well, there's again good attacking. Balak starts it, knocks it over. They just can't get a touch onto it. Village has been a busy man in there. Even when they're underwhelming in the run of play, Germany still carry a latent menace at three kicks and corners. Schweinsteiger with this one. Headed away by Kuzmanovic for Serbia, who have been compact and well organised. Jansen. Podolski. Polish born, of course, Lukas Podolski. Has lived here in Germany for most of his life. Frings. Now Kurani. Throw in is the end result. Karani is looking over towards referee Freddy Fautrel in hope more than expectation that a free kick might be given. Schweinsteiger. Says Arne Friedrich, who came on as a substitute at the start of the second half here in Gelsenkirchen. Janssen. I want to ask you, Tommy, and I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, based on what you've seen today and also on Tuesday against Belarus, what 
you think the German side will look like for the first match against Poland? The things over the top. Too long, too strong for Mario Gomez. Let's start with the strikers. Who would your strikers be? Close it, surely would be one of them. Oh, yeah, I, I would think it would be Close and Gomez would be the two strikers. The midfield, well, it would be much the same midfield as uh, this game starting here, although I might I might be giving a dunker a little bit of a run based on the way Fritz has played, but it's very difficult to just say one game you should get him out of there. And I know everything about a dunker that he's very unpredictable and he can be brilliant. I, I thought he I was very impressed with his ability against uh, Belarus. And the same defence, the one that we're seeing here, or at least uh, the one that started this match. Well, Lam, Metzelda, Mertesacker and Janssen. I would think so. I would think that's the bit of a line out. I don't think he has that many options. Schweinsteiger. The Serbian players quite happy to put their bodies on the line. And the lesser enchanted expression on the face of Kevin Kurani. Joachim Love takes a few copious notes. Ivanovic very, very tough in there. He, he won't take a backward step from you. I sincerely hope that he's given a run in the Chelsea side next season. He's given a chance. Yeah, you would imagine, that, I mean, we've seen him playing in, in Russia and he's a good player. He, he's very, very tough. He knows how to, he, he knows how to get himself involved in the game. And to be content with a few appearances for the Chelsea reserves in the second half of the season after joining from Lokomotiv Moscow. When he joined Chelsea, he was seen very much as the Blues' answer to Nemanja Vidic. They're playing together for Serbia today. Lazovic is trying to put a bit of pressure on Christoph Metzelda. Well, all these pressure situations for Metzelda is good for him. I mean, it's getting him into game shape. It's, it's getting him that he's going to be fit enough to play. That's why you can understand why he's still out there and why Mertesacker was the one replaced. And it's probably the same with Lam, although... And they're headed away by Fritz after the ball had been played over there by Ilic for Serbia. Vidic. And a Friedrich setter this time. 18 minutes into the second half. And still it's Germany nil, Serbia one. The final tune-up match for the Germans ahead of Euro 2008. Balak, Podolski. Using Marcel Janssen, his Bayern Munich teammate, and that's a corner as it comes spinning off the Dortmund man, Antonio Rukavina. Well, Janssen's another that's playing himself into good condition here. Good moves by Podolski instead of the box again. I thought maybe he held onto it a little bit too long. Thorsten Frings to take the corner. Balak waits again for Germany. That's a resolute Serbian defence, led by Ivanovic and Vidic. Janssen playing in his 22nd game for the Nationalmannschaft. Balak. Succeeds in finding Mikhail Balak once more. This is Gomez. And Vidic appeared to be wrong footed just for a second. But no damage done. De Kurani had no realistic chance of getting there, but applauds the idea. Well, the idea was good. The execution left something. But Balak has. Uh... I'm not sure why Balak is playing so hard out there. I mean, this, he's certainly not at any risk of not being on this team, but he's certainly the only player that has shown up tonight for Germany, in my opinion. They made one or two waves earlier on in the week here in Germany by demanding that they side in this match should be the first-choice team with the initial match at Euro 2008 against Poland in mind. We have 
for Frings on the ground. And the Banach has something to say to Freddy Fautrell, the French referee. Well, the elbows are flying there, and you, you can see that uh, Kuzmanovic. Fiorentina's Zdravko Kuzmanovic. And Torsten Fings wants to face Italy at Euro 2008. That's because he, of course, was denied the chance to play against the Azzurri in the World Cup semi-final two years ago. Because of that controversial suspension. And if they do face Italy, it'll be in the final. That's the only possibility for Germany. Team Lowe not thinking about the final at the moment. Germany not wanting to get ahead of themselves. It's really all about going into the tournament in the right frame of mind. And from that angle, the friendlies played this week haven't really done the job, albeit still time to rectify matters in the latter part of this game against Serbia. Well, there's a few players on the bubble here that have something to prove. I mean, uh, certainly Podolski coming on is something to prove. Frederick probably has something to prove. Uh, I, I think that, you know, the only one question that, that the Love has is who's going to start up front with Closer? Is it going to be Gomez? Is it going to be Karani? Or would Podolski be in there? He's not going to change radically at this stage, Derek. The only other attacking option, striking option he has would be Oliver Neville. 35 year old Oliver Neville. Well, we thought his ace was going to be that he had the youngster with him, but he doesn't have the youngster with him now, so I mean, anything that if Neville gets selected, and obviously he's selected on his own work, and he is a good, he's a good man at putting the ball in the back of the net as well, but I just can't see him as being this, one of the starting strikers. There's a belief that he's there because he's extremely adept as a penalty taker, and Germany do get to the knockout stages of the European Championship finals. Who knows? Might find themselves involved in the dreaded penalty shootout. Who better to have at the disposal of Joachim Löw than a cool common collector, Oliver Neville? And you can do that with a 23-man squad. You can have somebody in there for those reasons. Yeah, you can if you have the confidence enough that you're going to get to that stage. And, that you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't like to see a manager thinking that way. I would rather see a manager thinking, OK, we're going to go in and win the game. We're not going to have to get the penalty kicks. Of course, Neville can be an awkward customer in his own right in the run of play. Lively and pacey. Free kick here to the Germans, won by Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger has tried very, very hard in this one. He's done a lot of running. I don't think there was a foul there. Illich in himself, shoulder to shoulder. Schweinsteiger, down he goes. Referee didn't even consider it. The appeal for a penalty. Played on the left in the first half. Schweinsteiger has moved to the right in the second 45 minutes. Lazovic up there. For Serbia now, at times on his own, at times isolated. Antelic had that job in the first half. And a fair bit of whinging being done by Mikhail Balak. And uh, we're going to have changes now. More changes by Joachim Löw. Torsten Fings departs. And on comes Simon Rolfes. In his tenth cap. And uh, here's the other one, Kevin Kurani, the Schalke striker. Wasn't really able to catch fire against Serbia. And uh, we were just talking about him. Oliver Neville has given 20 minutes to impress the coaching staff. Oliver Neville, big part of Borussia Mönchengladbach's success in winning the German second division this past season. 15 goals coming from Neville. Here's Balak, shooting on sight. Comfortably taken by Stojkovic. Uh, Balak again, controlling the ball nicely. 
No problems for the keeper. You feel, don't you, that Tabanak is trying almost to micromanage everything out there? Yeah. Well, as you said, he wanted to manage the team during the week. I suppose all good leaders like to do a bit of micromanaging. I guess I'm not a good leader, then. Well, you have other redeeming qualities, Tommy. Native cunning. It has been said. OK. Balak. Schweinsteiger. And here's Neville. Now he gives less than 100% Oliver Neville. Good man to have in the squad, good team man. He's trying to locate the ball. Kuzmanovic was back there for Serbia. He's been back to the wall from Serbia in the second half. Not terribly ambitious. And there by Holfez. Gomez. Now it's Podolski into that thicket of bodies. And Germany are going to face sides who line up this way in the European Championship finals. So an excellent last test for them. Yeah, Neuville, he, he, he does bring something to a game that a lot of other strikers don't have. He's constantly moving. He's always on the move. He makes himself available. He, he covers an amazing amount of ground during a game. The change for Serbia. Sasha Ilic is going off. On his coming, Dejan Milovanovic of Red Star Belgrade. Red Star who missed out on winning the Serbian Championship. Partizan, the victors for the 20th time. Third international appearance for Milovanovic. Started the game against Russia in Burghausen on Wednesday. It was actually replaced by Illich. It was the other way then. Schweinsteiger. Fritz. Balak reaching out for it. Couldn't get there. Wolfers playing alongside Michael Balak now. In the heart of that German midfield. Podolski. Rolfes. Schweinsteiger thought about the ambitious, audacious long range shot and decided against it. At times Germany have looked a bit static, but not here. Janssen! The equaliser from Oliver Neville. 1 1, thanks to the 35 year old. Just four minutes after coming on, he spares Germany's blushes. Well, again, that's his movement. And uh, who, who starts it? Ballack starts it. Janssen switches it across. And Oliver Neuville, whose jaw was around like Spider-Man, is in top of this one. Janssen does very well. He rides off the tackle, gets the ball across. And Oliver Neville does what he does best. Bulges the along him back. Beautiful strike on the ball. Look at you see him concentrating on it. There's no way this thing is getting away from him. You saw Gomez with an opportunity in the first half, didn't put it away, and the Chancellor said, Yeah, that's the one we wanted. Joachim Love makes the right change at the right time. Oliver Neville scores his tenth goal for Germany. This is 68th international appearance. They had certainly been the more ambitious of the two sides in the second half, indeed, for most of the match. The earlier goal from Jankovic, cancelled out by Neville. Germany won, the Serbia won, here in Gelsenkirchen. So just leaving five minutes past seven on a Saturday night. Hope you're enjoying our coverage on ESPN, whatever you're watching. And 
of more international football for many of you tomorrow. I'll take you to Port of Spain for Trinidad and Tobago against England. Podolski watches it trickle out of play. The German flags are flying proudly now. Something that's returned to German life as a whole ever since the 2006 World Cup. There used to be a reticence to wave the German flag. Yeah, and I think the good thing for the Germans uh, in terms of the team, anyhow, is the support they're going to have in, in the Euros. I mean, it's basically going to be close to being home games. So there'll be plenty of German supporters on site. Because, uh, a small percentage of them will get into the games because we're not talking about super large grounds in Austria and Switzerland. Rolfes for Germany. Now it's Balak. In addition to the grounds being small, the ticket allocations are small. And if you want to get in, you'll find a way. And the man who went down was Jankovic, Bosco Jankovic, from Serbia. Scored his fourth international goal earlier, but the German repost from Oliver Neville. You know, and uh, Dragutinovic almost did enough to put uh, Oliver Neville off, but didn't manage it. Lovely little move here. Janssen did very well to keep it alive. The Germans have got a great word that uh, really sums up Oliver Neville. Quirlig, which basically means somebody who never stops running and trying and dribbling and... Just a constant nuisance. Yeah, he's all over the place all the time. I mean, if you were a defender in there, he would drive you nuts. Offside flag goes up here against Serbia. Well, your man Odonkor is going to be given a run for these last few minutes. I know, Tommy, he caught your eye against Belarus. Yeah, again, the, the constant movement, good movement on the ball. He did a lot of good things, in my opinion. One of the favourite substitutes of Jürgen Klinsmann at the last World Cup, David Odonkor. And we're looking in the end for Schweinsteiger. That's the switch. Odonkor for Schweinsteiger. And he's run his legs off in this match, as he always does. Bastian Schweinsteiger started on the left. Moved to the right in the second half, but now it's Adonkor's turn. Almost brings pace and electricity to the German side and fits very nearly finding David Adonkor. Didn't have the best of seasons with Betis in Spain, Adonkor. Yeah, didn't get a whole lot of playing time in either, which is uh, one of the problems that Love seems to be facing every time he turns around to make a move. Podolski. Janssen, the architect of Neville's equaliser for Germany. And Janssen bustles forward again. Was he trapped on the edge of the area? He was. And it's going to be a yellow card as well. A yellow card for Ivanovic. Well, this is a case of it. Janssen just pushing his way in and uh, Ivanovic certainly tripped him just on the edge of the box Janssen is very very strong when he gets up ahead of steam it's very difficult to deny him any kind of space it's taken us 80 minutes but we have a booking in the name of Branko Branislav Ivanovic taken by referee Freddy Fotrell ground again is Jankovic. A little pause here while we wait for Balak. 
Germany were trailing until six and a half minutes ago. Now they're on terms. And an opportunity here to go ahead for the very first time. Is it going to be Balak or will it be Podolski? They're together as Jankovic has stretched off. And the substitute is at the ready, Zoran Tosic. 20-year-old partisan Belgrade player. He wins his ninth cap. Once again, Balak wants to talk to the referee, not happy about the Serbian wall, how far back they are, or how far back they aren't. Potentially pivotal moment in this match. And Balak strikes it! Balak scores for Germany, emphatically. That was brilliantly driven home. Mikhail Balak plays the captain's part and helps the German fans erase the negative thoughts just days before Euro 2008. Alaba Nouvel involved again, and look at this. Nicely set up, and Balak bulges the corner of the all on your bike. Uh, there's no micromanagement of that. It's simply a job of walking up. The wall doesn't react. The wall splits. The keeper has no chance. Look at that. You never see the keeper in the picture, and Balak knows exactly where he's going to drive that. That is just brilliant, brilliant stuff from Balak. Inspirational stuff. Certainly the Chancellor, Angela Merkel, was inspired... she should be and well, he can't do it single-handed Mikhail Balak but he is the sort of player who's going to have to come to the fore of Germany are to win the European Championship for the fourth time well I think you can see his intentions here I mean we're 83 minutes into the game and Balak is still playing as hard in this game as he was when the game started and uh, he scores himself a magnificent goal Michael Westermann is coming on here to replace Marcel Jansen. One of the great strengths of Westermann is his versatility. He'll play in just about any defensive position, although there's a preference for centre-half. Westermann, who missed the game against Belarus, he had to rush back home to Bielefeld as his wife was giving birth. Did uh, give birth to a daughter, Lana. Oh, I think uh, Jansen played very well. A couple of very, very determined runs, and uh, he was involved in the two goals. I mean, he set the first one up, and he was fouled for the second one. And Rukovina for Serbia. And that goal from Balak. See the visitors awake from their slumber. Haven't really contributed very much at all in an attacking sense in the second half. Well, that's the last thing that Metzelder needs is to be getting cut down. He kind of sat on it. Once the scored Serbia, they sat on it. After this for the German players, two days off. Chance to go home and uh, relax with the family and then it's the serious business of the on-site training camp in Ascona that'll be from Tuesday on in the run-up to Germany's first game in Group B at Euro 2008 against Poland in Klagenfurt at the Wörthersee Stadion in Klagenfurt Psychology is such an important aspect of football nowadays. And I know, Tommy, you don't like to put too much stock in these friendlies, but there's a world of difference between going into a big competition following a victory, and the victory when you were trailing, as opposed to a demoralising defeat. Oh, yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, it does, uh, it plays on the minds of players. 
as you said, I don't put much stock on it, but it is a better feeling to go in there after a, a victory than it is to go in after a loss. But you know, at the end of the day, hey, it's the next game that counts, not this one. Oliver Neville, scorer of the German equaliser. Just eight minutes before Balak thumped home the goal that could go down as the German winner. It's not over yet, however. Germany won't want to count their chickens because we remember what happened against Belarus on Tuesday in Kaiserslautern. Yeah, I think they can count their chickens here. I think this one's over. Dragutinovic. Let's try to slide that one forward along the left-hand touchline. Oh, Babovic, the foul coming in from Clemens Fritz. Rukavina. It's Metzelda. Balak had it nicked away from him by Milan Smiljanic. Serbian free kick. Monfres with the challenge. Fritz. Westerman playing at left back now, having come on for Jansen. Run by Babovic. And this is Lazovic. It was a test for Arne Friedrich. And he passed that test. And Serbia are making a late push. Germany perhaps just psychologically sitting back a little bit. Rukovina. That's not going to help the Serbian cause. Here's a Donkor. It's very popular with the German supporters. Oh, they absolutely love him. Every time he gets the ball, it's almost like they anticipate something good happening to, for Germany. I think it's down to the fact that he's a bit different in terms of his style. Brings something different to the team. Nobody else quite like Odonkor on the squad. Yeah, a little bit more flair and a little bit more, a little bit more outgoing than uh, some of his teammates. And Odonkor racing forward here. Vidic reaches across. And Odonkor decidedly unhappy with the behaviour of Nemanja Vidic. Well, I think he paid for uh, he paid for his foul here. Okay, he does. He gets cuffed, all right. He gets cuffed just under the chin. Vidic with those long arms. But again, that speed of a dunker and the fact that he's willing to run at you. Looking for protection from referee Freddy Fortrell. The free kick has been awarded, but no action against Vidic. Oliver Neville in the final minutes of normal time with this German free kick. Westermann has gone up there to join Gomez and Friedrich and Rolfes. Neville and the header from Rolfes. Didn't really pack a punch. Neville delivered it all right, but uh, Rolfes. Neville has played a huge role since coming in here into this game. Rolfes directed back there to get it, but would have done better, I think, by just playing it across into the middle. That's one of the encouraging things for Joachim Löw. He has players who can come on as substitutes and make an impact. Certainly, Odonkor and Neville fall in that category. Good men to have on the bench. Yeah, they change the complexion of the game, you know, where that 4-4-2 sometimes is a little bit static. When Odonkor and Neville come in, uh, hey, they're running all over the place. Nobody really knows where they're going to be. Rukavina for Serbia. Inside stoppage time at the end of the game here in Gelsenkirchen. So the header back there by the captain, Michael Balak, to goalkeeper Jens Lehmann. That's what I'm talking about with Balak, Derek. I mean, here it is, the end of the game, he's still back in his own area, helping out. Donkor being urged forward again by this Gelsenkirchen crowd. Neville over here to get. 
Not even a dunk or could reach that one. The Ballock there making a touch on the ball. It's amazing how casual a game Lehman has had. I mean, <laughs> he's had to do nothing. Pick the ball out of his own net once. That was about it. And come out and get clobbered once. Just that uh, back pass by Metzelda forced Lehmann into action, but very little activity for the German number one. So he hasn't had to deal with the ball flying around as he felt was the case against Belarus and Kaiserslautern on Tuesday. Yeah, he certainly feels that the new ball does uh, help out anybody who's hitting it at him. Kuzmanovic, that's a useful ball. And Germany almost suffering a similar fate to Tuesday. It was on, it was there for Tosic, the substitute. Beautiful ball. Kuzmanovic with a ball off the outside of his foot. Did it directly into the pad. It's on to the European Championship finals for Germany now. And they'll go there with more confidence than threatened to be the case earlier on because they've turned this match round. They've defeated Serbia by two goals to one. Jankovic had given the Serbs the advantage for Oliver Neville and then Mikhail Balak with a thumping free kick, changing the course of events. And, uh, well, two days off now for the German players. And then to Ascona on Tuesday. And the final stage of preparation before the first match at the Euros against Poland on Sunday of next weekend. Germany have beaten Serbia 2-1. Well, they say here in Germany, Ende gut, alles gut, all's well that ends well. And the Germany have ended their preparation with a victory. Preparation for Euro 2008. 2-1 the final score against Serbia. The late goals from Oliver Neville and Mikhail Balak after Bosko Jankovic had given Serbia the lead. And Germany can now look forward with more confidence to the first match at Euro 2008 against Poland. Tommy, it was 1-0 to Serbia going into the second half. Take us through the key moments from the second 45 minutes. Oh, this was a great opportunity here, and uh, Jankovic hits it off the crossbar. 2-0, hey, it's going to be a long way back for the Germans. Nice ball driven in by Rukavina, and Lehmann is completely beaten, but uh, this one comes off the crossbar. Then 58 minutes in, uh, Balak, lovely ball inside. Good shot. Good effort, actually, but not a good shot from Podolski, who had played well since coming on as a substitute. But then 74 minutes in, the Germans moving the ball around. Janssen, Oliver Neville has been inserted in there. Balak with a lovely touch on the ball, and Neville bangs it home. Does what he does best, gets himself into a position where he can be of value to you. Look at that, it's just a simple ball from Balak. Janssen does well to write off the challenge, and Neville does well to hammer it home. The strength of Janssen told there, and the skill of Neville finished it off. Then a free kick, uh, Neville, Balak, and Balak bangs it into the corner of the net. The keeper never had a chance. This is just really well set up, and the captain, look at that, he finds the seam that's between those defend uh, the, the wall, but the wall breaks apart. Watch this, he just picks the spot where the wall broke apart. Made it look so simple. There's the wall not doing its job for Serbia. Don't forget more international football coming up tomorrow here on ESPN. We'll take you to Port of Spain for Trinidad and Tobago against England. Adrian Healy and Robbie Musto will be your commentators. Every kick of the ball on this very channel. That's Trinidad and Tobago against England. As always, consult your local guides to find out when our coverage begins. Now onwards and upwards for Germany. As they now get ready for Group B at the European Championship Finals. It looked for long spells here as though they were going to go down to Serbia. Now that negative thought to carry with them to the base camp in Ascona. Not so. A 2-1 victory. And uh, Tommy... First game against Poland coming up. How do you see it going for Germany? Yeah, I think the Germans will uh, just shade that one. I mean, when you get to Germany against Poland, there's always a kind of a derby match to throw the form out the window, but I just feel the Germans are strong enough to get it. Remember, some of you can join us here on ESPN for full coverage of Euro 2008. 
We invite you to do so, depending upon where you are around the world. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage here from the Feltins Arena. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For all your football news, as always, go to the website. There's only one website to go to for comprehensive news and analysis. That's ESPNSoccerNet.com. Michael Balak with what turned out to be the winner for Germany this evening. They've defeated Serbia by two goals to one. From me, Derek Ray, and all the team, it's good night.